Hey everybody, RC here. As content starts moving more and more and more online from an education standpoint, the quality of the Zoom meeting is going to be even more essential. So I've been out experimenting and playing around with different options that I think could be useful for people who are delivering courses online or holding meetings online. And I wanted to kind of share some of the stuff that I found from a desktop setup that doesn't seem too crazy. So the first of everything starts with a camera of choice, right? And I wanted to try to find a camera that I could use that was still a great shooting camera. Like I want to be able to take it outside. I want to be able to work with it. I'm going to do all sorts of stuff. But then at the same time, I wanted to be able to prop it up like this and start doing stuff with it from a video standpoint. The camera that I'm experimenting with now is the Fujifilm X-T200. So that is a 24.2 APS-C camera. It goes from 200 to 12,800. It can do eight frames per second if you're shooting with it. And you can do 4K at 29.97 or you can do HD at 60, or HD being 1920 by 1080 at 60 frames per second. And the reason that I wanted to go with a small camera, a mirrorless camera, and one of the reasons that I was excited about the SD200 was the overall size. It is incredibly small. It's great that it fits in the hand, but then at the same time, I wanted to make sure that I could have something on my setup here that didn't feel like it was protruding too much, right? I tried using a D800, right? A DSLR camera, the 24 to 70. And while it's a great camera, the overall size is really big and it's very precarious when it's sitting right in front of you. So small is gonna be the key here. If you wanna have something on your desk, make sure that it's as compact as possible. Make sure that you take a look at this camera. Now, field of view. What would give you a really good look for this kind of stuff is if you had some of this stuff kind of a little blurred out so that the focus is on the person. I needed to find a lens that kind of gave me a good sweet spot for things to be out of focus and then at the same time, don't feel like it's too close to my face. So I experimented with the 23 millimeter, the 50, and I think it's like the 18 millimeter to see which one was best. 18 felt a little too wide. The 50 felt very, very boxed in and I felt like it was really close to me. The 23 was definitely the sweet spot for me. So I'm using a 23 millimeter F2. Let's talk about the depth of field, right? If I were to measure my face, right, it's my ruler. So one, two, maybe three feet away from the lens. Now the background is much further back. So the distance that I have from my face to the lens or the distance of the camera and the distance of the background, right? I am closer to the camera than the background is because of that space. That's why that's out of focus. Now, if you got your camera or you got your subject closer to the camera so that the subject is closer to the camera with, and the background is further away from the camera, so that ratio increases, then your out of focus goes even more so. Imagine this, right? My world's greatest dad trophy. If I put it right here, and notice that as I focus on that, everything goes super blurry, right? Because it's closer, much closer to the camera, proportionate to the distance between the camera and the background. So that's how that's going to work. Make sure that you keep that in mind that you don't wanna just sit directly against the backdrop. That's gonna create a problem. XT200, 23 F2, that pretty much is good to go. Light stand, right? So what I'm using here is I'm using an onstage light stand. I wanna to try to keep all of this stuff as cheap as possible because I think it's important. I'm using a microphone stand actually. So the microphone stand, I have it set up so that I can support the camera. But the problem with microphone stands is that it has a 5 eighths adapter and that would need to be converted to a small quarter 20 so that you can put a small ball head on top of that. But once you get your desktop stand, make sure that you get a 5 eighths to quarter 20 adapter, then you can attach the ball head to that. This is good because it gives you a nice base and because the camera is not really all that big, it's going to sit in one spot and you can go up and down. That's important, right? You don't want to necessarily have a camera aimed straight down at you and have everything look distorted. You don't want to have the camera kind of pointing up at you and looking up at your nose. You want to be able to have a nice field of view 
and have the ability to be able to adjust it up and down when you're doing that. That's pretty much the setup that I'm using for propping the camera up. Now, obviously you're also gonna need a long HDMI cable and you will need something like an Elgato Cam Link 4K. This device lets you go HDMI out of this and into your computer. Now, just today, Fuji announced that X-Series cameras will be able to use a piece of software that goes USB directly out of the camera and into the computer. I think that's gonna be a great thing because it eliminates the need to have to have another device, right, another cost, but for right now, the only bad news is that it's only available for Windows. Let's see what happens with that. In terms of lighting, I have to give it up to Caleb Pike of DSLR Video Shooter. He has a fantastic video that talks about a entire YouTube setup that you can put on a desk. And he got me turned on to these lights from Fositan. And these are Fositan 1x2 LED lights. It is incredibly hard to find them on Amazon, but when you do, you can find them for under $200. Now, by comparison, if you were to take a look at somebody like Westcott, right, that same 1x2 light would cost you $1,000. So you have a $1,000 light and you have a $200 light. Right now, one of the things that I'm doing is I tend to like to desaturate things a little bit. So I'm using one of the presets from inside of the Fuji to kind of tone it down a little bit. But I have one light that I'm using and it sits up to the camera right, and those backlights are using LED lights, and then on those LED lights, I've actually attached some black aluminum foil, known as cinefoil, to kind of black out some of those lights. So collectively, it gives you kind of more of a textured background in terms of lighting and makes it a little bit more interesting. And it comes with a remote, right? You either like it or not like it, which I think is great. So on this side, I'm just using a regular standard Ikea desk lamp that just sits right there and it just kind of fills in this one section. Take a look. Right, super contrasty. Fill in a little bit and you're pretty much good to go. But that's pretty much what we're doing here for a basic light setup. Now, in terms of audio, right, you could use something like a Rode Video Micro that you can attach to the hot shoe of the camera or you can suspend over that a better microphone or a better quality microphone. I'm using a large diaphragm microphone. That's a USB connected microphone. For me, I'm using, this is a Samson C03U, but you can use a variety of different ones. I think Blue makes a series of microphones that I think are really good. Uh, you can go with a Rode microphone, right? I think the Rode has an NT1 USB that you could use for that but it all depends on the type of sound that you're going for. You can definitely use something that's small that's attached to the camera and give you a good setup. Now, because I'm shooting this inside of my basement studio, I have a drop ceiling, thankfully, so I've got a couple of Kubo clips that sit at the very top and they're suspending down or dropping down the microphone to a location that's literally, if I have to take my ruler back out and measure it, it's about maybe 14 inches or 15 inches away from my face. So it sits just off of camera, which I think is important. A couple of things that you should keep in mind is when you're using cameras like this, DSLR cameras, all right, any camera that you're working with is going to need a constant power source. So to do that, you're gonna have to buy a dead battery. And more often than not, what these are, these battery shells that get plugged into the camera and then a cable comes out and it gets plugged into a power supply. The second thing is, what happens if the camera goes down, right? What happens if it overheats? What happens if all of a sudden it can't focus and things like that? You should always have a backup of something that you can use. If you'll see here, I actually have a cold shoe with another ball head on top of it that has the Logitech C920 webcam that's connected to that. That way, should something happen, I can go ahead and go, listen, all right, let me get out of this delicious mode and get into just standard webcam mode, just in case I need it. So that's pretty much it. I wanted to give you a quick walkthrough of how I'm creating this look and the setup for most of this stuff. Thank you so much, Caleb Pike, for introducing me to the lights. Thank you so much for Fuji for letting me experiment with the X-T200. I think that this is a fantastic camera. Between the 23 F2 and the X-T200, it makes it a really, really smart choice if you're doing this kind of content for the internet. My name is RC. I'll talk to you guys soon.